sister? It's not her sister. So this is nine-month-old Bissam, and this is her cousin, Salam. And we've been talking to their, let's see, their mothers, their grandmother, and we've been reminded again of just what families go through who have fled Syria. They've had relatives who've been killed. They've watched their husbands and their son be uh, beaten and mistreated. There's been death all around them. Their houses have been destroyed. So they're here in Jordan. Not because they want to be, but because they feel they have no choice. This is how you become a refugee. When you leave somewhere that's so bad, you have to find somewhere else to go. But this story hasn't ended because there's sadness. They're still not getting the care and treatment that they, that they need. Uh, their husbands are fortunate to get work of any kind here. Uh, they are really living in many ways from day to day. They get minimal help. They wonder about the future for their children. And of course their desire, like so many families that we've talked to, they want to go back. They're hoping for that day when there's peace. And uh, the grandmother here said to me, we hope the world will hear our children's voices. And that's really the only appeal that we can make. It's appeal on behalf of children, the future of children, and children won't survive without their mothers and grandmothers. So there's so much still to be done. And most of all, of course, we all pray for peace. But in the meantime, what do we do to help families like this? And that's where you, me, other people around our world can make a difference. Whether it's advocating to stop this war, or whether it's finding some money to give some help so that families like this can have some confidence there's another thing for them. It's a sad story, and yet when you play with these children, there's hope. There's always hope when there's children. That we can be assured of.